Hello, everyone. It's been a very strange day. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you about what happened, and then I'll start the lecture. So I got up this morning and uh, started to put my day together, and then I tried to sign into my Gmail account. And it said that it had been disabled because I violated the terms of service with Gmail. And I thought, well, I didn't violate any terms of service that I know of. Now, I set up a new YouTube channel yesterday called Jordan B. Peterson Clips. And so we made some technical changes. And so I thought maybe it had something to do with that. And I had been shut out of Google one other time years ago. So when you get shut out like that, there's a little form you can fill out. And so I filled out the form and I said that I had been shut out and uh, that I didn't know why, and I sent it off. And then I realized one of my staff members called me and said that she was locked out of the YouTube account. And I thought, oh yeah, the YouTube account is hooked to the Gmail account. So that meant that I couldn't get access to any of my YouTube videos. They were still up and online, but I couldn't get access to them. I couldn't post last week's biblical lecture, for, for, for example. And so that was worrisome and made me suspicious. And then about two hours later, something like that, I got an email from Google, and they said that they had reviewed the, my request to be reinstated and that I had violated Google's terms of agreement or terms of service, and they weren't going to turn my account back on. And I thought, and they didn't say why. They didn't say anything. I got, there was no warning whatsoever about any of this. They didn't tell me why, and they didn't say why in the email response. And so I wrote them back and I said, because they said I could, I wrote them back and I said, this might not be a good idea, basically. <laughs> and you might want to think about it. And then I tweeted, tweeted what had happened, right? I took screenshots and I tweeted and I contacted a whole bunch of journalists because it turns out that I know a whole bunch of journalists. And so, <laughs> and so then what happened then was that um, I got a call from the Daily Caller in the United States. I had done an interview with them last week, which isn't posted yet. And they interviewed me and within 20 minutes posted it online. And so... They have a fairly big audience, and so that was good. And then somebody phoned me from Ottawa, and I did a live radio show about that, and that was good. And then a number of other journalists contacted me, and I sent them the information. But another one of my staff, actually my son, emailed me, and he said, look, you should hold off because maybe there's still a mistake here. And I thought, yeah, there might be. It might be just a mistake, but then why in the world did I email Google and they contacted me and they said they would not reinstate it and they didn't provide me with any information. So I contacted the other journalists and I said, well, you never know, maybe this is just a mistake, so let's hold off. And then while I was about half an hour later, while I was trying to get into my, I used this AdWords account that's linked to Google. I don't run ads on my videos, but I need the AdWords account because it helps me add some little gadgets to the videos that I wouldn't otherwise be able to. And I was, I was playing with that, the system came back online. I thought, well, that's interesting. And lots of people had emailed me and Twittered me and some people within Google and some people elsewhere, and they were doing whatever they were going to do to help me get all this material back up and running. And so something worked. My suspicions are that what worked was the publicity. Now, so, but maybe not, you know, and it, it's very weird being in this situation because there has been a number of recent episodes where these larger companies, Facebook, Google, Patreon, not that it's a massive company, but it's starting to become reasonably significant, have decided on rather arbitrary grounds to shut down their users. And this is very ominous to me, partly because we've we've turned our communications over to very large systems or very large systems have emerged to mediate our communication, right? I mean, there's lots of benefit to it, so you don't want to get too cynical about it. But we're blind with regards to the policies that regulate the, the, the actions, the regulatory actions of these large organizations. And that's really a bad thing. And something else is even more ominous, really ominous, you know, 
it's highly probable that we're going to build political algorithms into our artificial intelligence, and this sort of thing will be regulated by machines that no one understands. And that's a really bad idea, and that's a really likely possibility. So anyways, I was all confused about this. I thought, Jesus, maybe I flew off the handle, you know, because I was sort of, it was stressful, man, you know, because I have like 150,000 emails in that account. Like, that's a lot of emails, and it's all my correspondence for the last 10 years, you know, so it's an archive as well as an ongoing email system. I have a commercial email system that I just set up three weeks ago with like six different email addresses now to try to organize my correspondence, so I wasn't completely unable to communicate, but my calendar was gone, and that's a bloody disaster because like I've got things scheduled out forever, and I don't remember what they are. I can't even remember what I'm doing in a day, so much less in a month. But I thought maybe I flew off the handle, and I was worried that I contacted the journalist too soon, and you know, but anyways, it all worked out. <laughs> so, then what happened? Well, just as I was coming to this lecture, I stepped outside, and there was a little package outside. And luckily, it wasn't a bomb. And there, was a <laughs> there was a package outside, a nice little package. And we looked, my wife and I looked inside it, and there was a couple of bottles of wine in there. And so that was nice, and there was a little note. And so I'm going to read you the little note, because it's actually pretty interesting. So... So this person said that they had finally tackled the self-authoring suite, so they seemed to be happy about that, but that's not so interesting except peripherally. A friend on Twitter has contact with Google engineers. She said, quote, I spoke with some friends inside Google who offered to help, and I did get contacted by quite a few people at Google who said that they had been you know, watching my lectures and so on and were happy about what I was doing. Anyways, I spoke with some friends inside Google who offered to help, but they suggest he set up a backup plan. The teams are feeling significant pressure from advocacy groups. And, quote, I have at least four Google engineers who offered to speak up on his behalf, but they know the team dynamics, and unfortunately, especially YouTube, is an SJW cesspool. I hope this information is useful to you. It's like, yeah, it's kind of useful, all right. So that was, that was part of what happened today. And so, anyways, I still don't really understand it, right? Because I don't know why it got shut down, and I don't know if anything I did got it turned back on, and I don't know the reasons for it, and that's also rather ominous. It seems to me that when I was thinking it through, and was that... You know, I have a fairly, what would you call it, respectable YouTube following. I don't know if you'd necessarily call it respectable. It's fairly large YouTube following. And it seems to me that it would have been appropriate for Google, if they were going to shut down my account, to tell me why, I would think. And also maybe look me up, maybe, especially after I emailed them. And then maybe not to have emailed me back and said, no, we're not going to reinstate you, but we're not going to tell you any reasons. They didn't say they wouldn't tell me any reasons. They just didn't tell me any reasons. And then it also seems very strange to me that it just all of a sudden went back on after two hours. And so, well, so I don't know what to make of that. Maybe more information will come to light over the next few days. I hope that I didn't jump the gun, but it's very, a very peculiar set of circumstances. I thought it was kind of amusing, actually, that the video that they stopped me from posting today was the last biblical lecture. You wouldn't necessarily think that that would be the sort of thing that people would want to stop from being posted, but um, we're in very, very strange times. So, that was my adventure for today. And so, I didn't... <laughs> 